In previous sections, we defined the six trigonometric functions as angles in standard position or as ratios of a right triangle. Often, it is necessary to modify the trigonometric functions so that their domains consist of real numbers rather than angles. Hello, my name is Tom Atwater, and in this section, we will define the six trigonometric functions as circular functions with real numbers as their domain. We will begin by defining the unit circle and circular functions. The equation for a circle is, of course, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. A unit circle has its center at the origin with a radius of one unit. So the equation for the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Starting at the point 1 comma 0, which we have right here on the x-axis, we take and wrap a real number line around the circle. And in this particular case, I am going to begin to wrap the number line around the unit circle like this. And in particular, I'm going to stop, though, at the point x comma y, which is, of course, the terminal side of this angle theta in standard position. And here's my angle theta. Now, the arc length, we use the letter S to represent arc length. And of course, that is going to be measured in linear units, either centimeters, or it could be feet, or it could be meters. Theta, the actual angle, though, is measured in radians. So S is in linear units, but theta is in radians. All right, so now, this leads to circular functions in the following manner. If you remember from triangle trig, let me drop a perpendicular forming a right triangle in which this side, of course, would be the value for x. This side would, of course, be the value for y. And I'm going to label this theta prime just to distinguish it between the theta that we've already drawn. From your right triangle trig, you know that we can set things up where we can take, for instance, the sine of theta prime and say that that's equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And again, this is the unit circle, so the hypotenuse is equal to 1. So not only does sine of theta prime equal y over 1, but that's also the sine of theta equaling y over 1. So let's write that down. And that also equals the sine of theta. And of course, in this particular case, the sine of theta is positive in quadrant 2, and the sine of theta prime is obviously positive. So they are equal to y over 1, which of course means they are equal to plain old y. Well, now let's realize then that the sine of the angle measured in radians sine of theta, we can relate that to the sine of the arc length s. And what we can say is that sine of s is equal to y. So let's take a look. I'm saying now the sine of the arc length s is equal to y. And by similar reasoning, which I won't take us through to the right triangle, we have that the cosine of the arc length s is equal to x. Well, now what we can do is look at the remaining trig functions based on the circular functions and define each of them. So let's take a look at the other four trig functions. We already know that sine s is equal to y, cosine s is equal to to x, tangent of s is equal to y over x, 
x, of course, can't be 0. We have cosecant of s is equal to 1 over y, and of course, y can't be 0. Secant of s is equal to 1 over x, x not equal to 0, and cotangent of s is equal to x over y, where y is not equal to 0. These may look very familiar to you, and in fact, they should look familiar to you because we looked at right triangle trig earlier, and you will see that we use the same set of letters in defining the right triangle trig. The difference was we were taking the sine of an angle as measured, not the sine of the arc length as measured. These, the circular functions, are the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of arc length measurements. Let's do an example now that we have an understanding and we can evaluate trig functions based on the angle being in radians as opposed to in degrees. Find all six circular functions, function values of the real number pi over 6 by hand. That is to say, don't use a calculator. Now, from the properties of our 30, 60, 90 triangle, an angle of pi over 6 radians is equivalent to 30 degrees. So let's recall, if I were to draw a unit circle and draw pi, whoops, pi over 6 radians. So this measure is pi over 6. But again, recalling from our triangle trig, this pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Therefore, if I were to draw a triangle here, then I know this is 1. This side over here is going to be 1 half, and this side over here is going to be the square root of 3 over 2, which means this point would be labeled square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. So now, if I use my definitions that we just looked at, for instance, that the sine of this angle, pi over 6, as measured and radians would be equal to the y value. So I know sine pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. I can now find all of my other trig functions, for instance, cosine pi over 6. That's going to be equal to the x value. The x value is square root of 3 over 2, so square root of 3 over 2. The tangent of pi over 6 is equal to y over x. So I take my y value, 1 half, put that over the x value, square root of 3, over 2. The 2's can cancel each other. This is 1 over radical 3, which when we rationalize it becomes the square root of 3 over 3. So now let's finish this off by looking at the cosecant of pi over 6. Cosecant of pi over 6, remember, is 1 over y. So it's equal to 1 over the y value, remember, is 1 half. And so that's equal to 2.